Okay, in this video, what I want to talk about is volume, or how much space does matter take up? How much space matter takes up? Okay, so let's start with a simple object. Let's start with a rectangular prism. So here's a rectangular prism, and we need to find the volume of this rectangular prism. Okay, well, if you look in any math book, you'll find this formula, and, and this is something that students learn at an early age, it will be length times width times height. So you would have, in this example, length, your width, and your height. So you take those three numbers, multiply them together, and you get your volume. Okay, so that's that should be pretty familiar to you. Now, there are other examples, other formulas you'll see in formula pages in, in textbooks. And another one is for a cylinder. So let's say you have a cylinder. All right, there's our cylinder. What's the formula for volume for the cylinder? For the cylinder, it's going to be pi r squared times h. Okay, remember R is the distance between, or is the distance from the center of the cylinder to the edge. That's R. And remember that pi equals 3.14. Okay? So those are two common objects. Let's do one more that is pretty common. We'll use the same color, I guess. Let's use yellow over here. Okay, so let's say you have a sphere. Not a perfect sphere right there, but just for this video, I think it'll be fine. So let's say you have a sphere with this being the R distance right there. Okay, there's our sphere. The formula for volume for the sphere is going to be 4 times pi R cubed divided by 3. So there's our volume for a sphere. All right, now, let's say you have an object that is not regular in shape. These are all what you would, what you would call regular objects. Let's say you have an irregular shaped object. How are you going to measure the volume without measuring the sides with the ruler? One method you can use is called the water displacement method. Water displacement method. And what this means is you're going to move water out of the way. So here's an example of that. I have this bolt here, and I want to find the volume of the bolt. So what is the volume of the bolt? Well, you take a graduated cylinder, which has, this is in milliliters here, these markings. Okay, so we have a certain amount of water, and this is what's called a meniscus, as you see a curve in the water as it clings to the sides of the glass. So you want to read the bottom of the meniscus here. Okay, that's the starting amount of water. So we have about 25 milliliters of water here. What you're going to do is you're going to place this object of irregular shape. You're going to place that object into the known amount of water. Okay, so let me just erase that arrow. And afterwards, let's say we place it in there. Okay, here it is. Afterwards, we see that the water level rises because all matter takes up space. The bolt took up space inside this water that was in the, in the graduated cylinder. The water level rose to 65 milliliters. Okay, so if we compare to where the level was before, here it is before. I already have it done up here. And this was before. This is our after. You're going to compare those. How much did the water level rise? This will be the volume of that bolt. So the volume of the bolt would equal the volume of the bolt would equal what we have afterwards, which is 65 milliliters, 65 minus our before amount of 25, 25 milliliters. So our final volume for this bolt, we can say that the bolt is 40 milliliters, takes up 40 milliliters of space. 
Now that might sound a little strange because we're not used to talking in terms of milliliters for a solid object. But remember that one mill milliliter, one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. So 40 milliliters also equals 40 cubic centimeters. So those are a couple ways to find volume.